As we've begun to see, one of the problems with arguing uh, in defense of God is that the evidence in your favor is uh, either terrible or non-existent. What, we, what we've heard from the other side and from the middle is that science is so complicated and counterintuitive and, and obviously incomplete that this leaves room for the God of Abraham. Okay, that's, that's basically the argument. That we, the scientists don't understand everything. We don't understand how the first mo complex molecules self-assembled. Indeed, we don't. Scientists are the first to admit when they don't know. So, so the arrogance is very much on the side of those who would put their Iron Age faith in the place of genuine scientific ignorance. Now, the other side has been playing hide the ball with the Articles of Faith. Okay, let's be very clear about this. <clears throat> I will speak about Christianity specifically just to, to, for, for ease. Christianity is based on the notion that the gospel account of the miracles of Jesus is true. Okay, th th this is what you have to reject to reject Christianity. You don't have to prove the universe to be absent of God. Uh, you don't have to, in the same way that you don't have to go find that Poseidon or Zeus or any of the thousands of other dead gods are absent from the universe. With Christianity, it is a textual claim about the veracity of the Bible. Consider what this amounts to. Bible scholars agree that the first, the first Gospels were written decades after the life of Jesus. Decades. And of course, we don't have the, the original manuscripts. We have copies of copies of copies of ancient Greek manuscripts, which have thousands, literally thousands of discrepancies between them, uh, many of which show signs of later interpolation, which is to say that people added passages that, that then became part of the canon. Uh, there are whole books of the canon, like the book of Revelation, which for hundreds of years were not included because they were deemed false gospel. There are other, other whole books, like the Shepherd of Hermas, which you probably haven't heard of, but for centuries it was considered part of the canon, and then was later jettisoned as false gospel. Generations of Christians lived and died being guided by gospel that is now deemed both incomplete and, mis and, and mistaken. Think about that. So this process, this all too human process of cobbling together the, the supposed authoritative word of God is a very precarious basis to assert the claims of Christianity. But the truth is, even if we had multiple contemporaneous claims uh, of the miracles of Jesus, this would not be good enough. Because miracle stories abound even in the 21st century. The devotees of, of the South Indian guru Satya Sai Baba ascribe all of the miracles of Jesus to him. He reads minds, he foretells the future, he, heal, he raises the dead, he was born of a virgin. Okay, Satya Sai Baba is, is not a fringe figure. You might not have heard of him, but he, they had a birthday party for him a few years ago, and a million people showed up. There are vast numbers of people who think he's a living God. Okay, so Christianity is predicated on the claim that miracle stories, exactly of the kind that today surround a person like Satya Sai Baba, become especially credible when you place them in the pre-scientific religious context of the first century Roman Empire, decades after their supposed occurrence, as attested to by copies of copies of copies of ancient Greek and largely discrepant manuscripts. We have Sakya Sai Baba's mir miracle stories attested to by thousands upon thousands of living eyewitnesses, and they don't even merit an hour on cable television. And yet you put a few miracle stories in an ancient book, and half the people on the earth think it a legitimate project to organize their lives around them. Does anyone else see a problem with that?